What if all of those elements of identity and these things are used to pander to you to get rid of your dopamine and serotonin? As the serotonin and dopamine levels decrease, we stop responding to all of the other vibrational information that's out there that our heart responds to. Did you know that the heart has special receptor cells that allow the heart to communicate with various parts of the body? It's not just the brain communicating with the heart. The heart is simultaneously receiving information that we can't sense through the five senses. Hey everybody, senses. right before we start this video, I just wanted to paint a quick picture as to the context of the video itself. I come from a place where I believe that Americans are addicted to ultra consumerism. We have access to access and this gives us the capacity for many great things to be exposed to a lot of great ideas, a lot of data and information that can support our purpose in life to be the best version of ourselves we can be and to facilitate those around us as well. We have that capacity using consumerism. However, I believe that we are being manipulated into using it irresponsibly, by which I mean that everything that we have access to blinds us from who we truly are and we become the product of the external environment that's sold to us from corporate media for example social media all of these corporate messages to persuade you into living a lifestyle that perpetuates corporate capitalism okay and in doing so it keeps us occupied with the external and not being able to live within the presence of the self-consciousness, the consciousness of the self, not the bullcrap self-consciousness where you where you start thinking about what you think other people think about you and thus we become that which other people think about us. Yeah. Instead of becoming conscious of the things around you, realizing that the corporate manipulation is external and when you remove all of those manipulations of who you think you are with all of the things that you bought, the fancy schmancy iPhone 11 Pro SXW TUB, whatever new gadget and device you have, those things are illusions. It's not who you are. We use them every day, but it keeps us uh, living externally. It becomes who you are. Those things stimulate our minds to the point where we become depleted neurochemically, nutrient wise, and spiritually. And this is why we're not sleeping. This is why we're depressed short term or long term from short term anxiety, which turns into chronic. And this is why we have massive morbidity and mortality issues in this country. This is what keeps us from ourselves. And so with that being said, enjoy the episode, everybody. This light on. Oh my goodness. Now. that light on oh my double goodness hello everybody what's going on jeremy from i motivate me welcome to the fitness and health investment initiative i'm on a very good stream of consciousness over this topic something i've been going over and rehearsing in my head and reading more about reading some research self-reflecting identifying it within myself because we share a universal consciousness by which when we reflect we understand human behavior we start to understand human behavior and gain more of a, uh, a perception of how humans actually behave similarly in many 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 ways we are individual but we are very much alike in terms of our psychology and how it's very easy to well persuade and influence the human mind by various techniques okay and today's episode is going to kind of be about that i want to talk about action potentials spiritual action potentials in order to understand action potentials we have to understand what an action potential is in our body when you want to perform a physical task, your muscles have to contract in order to move your bones. This requires thought. This requires an initial thought. 
you are responding to the environment around you. If somebody hands you a bag of potatoes, let's say it weighs 10 pounds, they hand you a bag of potatoes, you take the potatoes, gravity affects the bag of potatoes, and your muscles and your brain respond to the external environment that is the potatoes now in your hands. And so your biceps have to contract. This requires an action potential, the connection between your neurons and your brain and the muscle cells. There's a communication and this communication propagates at a very high frequency. As that volume and frequency and that propagation increases, that increases the likelihood that your muscle contracts. In the event that it doesn't, you drop the bag of potatoes. You are not able to overcome the resistance or the constraint placed on you by the external. So that action potential failed and therefore you did not take action. Your muscle did not take action. This is usually not the case. If you're strong enough and you're aware, you, you your body prepares to receive. You, you gauge how heavy that's going to be. You prepare yourself and then you grab the bag of potatoes and you're able to hold it. You're gripping it with muscles that require action potentials as well with your hands. You're holding it in position with your elbow at about 90, let's say 90 degrees. You're holding it like a fork lift. Now your biceps are contracting. Now your, your uh, anterior part of your deltoids contracting. Your trapezius that elevates your scapula is retracting. All of these things require action potentials. Okay, where am I going with this? We're taking action based on our external information from the five senses. We touch, we feel something, we see something. We understand that most likely that bag of potatoes is very heavy and so we prepare ourselves. And then we take action. You don't want to drop the bag of potatoes for various reasons. Why? Well, we could talk about that if you really want to. But we're not going to drop it. We're conforming to our external environment. Who wants to drop a bag of potatoes? Firstly, you don't want to fall over in a potato sack. Secondly, if you drop your food on the floor, who wants to eat that? You might damage the stuff and also you might get injured. Many reasons, right? So we take action. Those are action potentials. You want to lift weights? Action potentials. You want to write with a pencil? Action potentials. Okay, now let's say you want to do something with your life. and you are an anxious person you're finding it difficult to sleep you may you may or may not have been diagnosed with sleep apnea you may or may not have been diagnosed with um, elevated blood pressure or high blood pressure hypertension you may have been diagnosed with diabetes or onset many things right and a lot of times these are preventable whether we realize it or not, we tend to believe in many cases that because we don't understand initially why we feel the way we do or do the things we do or don't do the things we, we know we should, this is where we ignore intuition. I'm going to get into intuition. A lot of times we don't take these actions for various reasons. A lot of times they become psychological and we don't realize it. Why is that? Why is it that we don't choose to take action with the things that we know and we have either identified or know there are things to identify, to prioritize in our lives and either keep them and learn from them and use them or move on from them and not internalize them? That internalization. Could it potentially lead us to internalizing so many things that we're stimulating ourselves to the point where we can't take spiritual action from our external environment, those external constraints like the bag of potatoes? Are we being stimulated to the point emotionally where we don't have enough dopamine and serotonin to react enough to take action to thus ignoring 
that external data that doesn't conform with our five senses or our identity. And because of this, we end up not taking action. We absorb so much information on various devices with 5G technology. We are constantly bombarded with images, whether violent, sexual, uh, suggestive, provocative stuff. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it if you understand it and can cope with it and realize the difference between reality and informed consent. That's something we can talk about in another episode. Basically, persuasion by means of identity, by means of all these things. What if all of those elements of identity and these things are used to pander to you to get rid of your dopamine and serotonin? As the serotonin and dopamine levels decrease, we stop responding to all of the other vibrational information that's out there that our heart responds to. Did you know that the heart has special receptor cells that allow the heart to communicate with various parts of the body. It's not just the brain communicating with the heart. The heart is simultaneously receiving information that we can't sense through the five senses. And if the five senses are constantly being bombarded with stuff, with, with, with information that stimulates your neurons, your, your neuro neurological responses to the point where we are not able to perceive or take action on the perception of the other information that we're getting from our intuition, our heart. Our heart uses vibrations to communicate with other cells simultaneously in our bodies. This is how you're able to be heightened so quickly. It's a pulse. Your heart can pulsate. It's a pulse. There's a reason why they call it a pulse. It's instantaneous communication. And when we are dulled, from or protected by the ego. The ego is going to protect a lot of this information that comes through, the, this, these vibrations that come through, and we reject it. We don't take action on it. These are things in our lives, okay? These are things in our lives that lead to procrastination, things that we know that we need to get done. Why aren't we doing them? Why aren't we taking those signals that in, in making them into action potentials or recognizing them to the point where we take action because we have seen and identified those things that stimulate us through the five senses and we realize that there is more to it than that and in inviting other information in we are able to recognize the other ways in which we communicate through our senses not just the five senses but our interoception our proprioception, our intuition, all of these things help us uh, in removing all of the external things. When we are mindful of these other senses, we can then sit within ourselves for a second, take a step back when we've been triggered through our five senses. Don't let that dopamine and serotonin go too much. Okay, you've been triggered. Hold on. I'm not going to respond yet. I'm going to take a second here and I'm going to think about it. Let me come up with, with, let me rationalize it. There's a dark rationalization and a light rationalization and we can come into to terms in some way with ourselves okay so perhaps if we take opportunities to realize that the five senses that are being stimulated is kind of a distraction we can then reduce the amount of time that we spend being stimulated by that okay we see through the facade we understand what that represents and and we can say all right let's take a step back get rid of that for a second if you internalize it it's going to create more anxiety more dopamine serotonin release you're more excited this keeps you from uh taking in and this is how the ego protects itself all right it keeps you from taking in data that your heart otherwise would use to communicate with the rest of your body this is where we find the root of procrastination. This is where we find the root of what it means to be motivated. Because fear is an illusion. Illusions come from the five senses. Illusions come from the five senses of fear and anxiety. Those are illusions. There's a difference between danger, the real, the real possibility of one's uh, well-being being compromised. 
the possibility that you could be hurt uh, or the likelihood of you um, no longer existing in the physical three-dimensional form could possibly happen. You could die, right? Now, the Stoics will say that we, we accept death as our fate, and in doing so, we remove that ability for the external to infiltrate our thoughts through the five senses, thus blinding us from our, intuit our intuitive processes. If we're thinking about how we feel, get in touch with your body. We do yoga, we do stretching, we do exercises, we do these different things daily, and it helps us get into touch with our bodies. Are you going to go run a marathon if you start out that morning stretching and doing some light exercise and you realize that you've torn a hamstring or torn a, a tricep? Or, I mean, obviously, you're going to realize that when it happens, most likely. But let's say you determine there's something wrong. You feel it within yourself. That's being in touch with your body. You're removing all the external factors. Yes, you're excited. Yes, you're pumped up. Yes, the nine people in your group are going to go run together. Yes, that this is supposed to be your destiny. Or is it? If you're in touch with your body and you've predetermined that you're not well and you shouldn't run, you have, you have listened to your intuition and you go to the doctor and you find out there are some serious uh, health issues. Had you run that marathon, you may have just ignored those issues for the next year, two years, whatever to the point where it becomes um, either chronic or permanent or could lead to mortality, okay? This is the spirit actual action potential. When we take those fears, and, and this is how we can trick ourselves. This is a good trick to use. We take those illusions and fears and recognize that they are illusions and there's there's a solution to those fears or and uh, or a goal that we're trying to reach and those fears are always trying to keep you from that they're obstacles and when you realize they're illusions you then go towards them because it's a vacancy you realize it's an empty fear is empty so we rush in to fill that fear and we use it to our advantage this is an esoteric method that we can use in our heads to recognize fear and this becomes your purpose because you realize that fear is usually standing in the way of your purpose this is how we identify our purpose by removing all of the identity things, by removing all of the things that corporate media can use or the external environment can use to manipulate you. Nature is even trying to manipulate you in a way. That's why animals fool their prey or fool the predators with the design of their graphics on their skin or feathers or whatever the case to keep them camouflaged or makes them look more intimidating. It's, a, it's an illusion. And once you see past that, if you're a predator trying to eat that prey that's trying to give you an illusion that it's bigger than it really is and that it's more fearful and its eyes are bigger than what you think it is, you see past the illusion and you start to see the purpose, which is to feed you and get in my belly. Right? That's that's sustainment. That's the, that's the, the balance of life, the energy balance. And we have a positive energy balance in this world, in our society today. And that's in a negative way. That means we're consuming more energy than what we're burning. And it's having a detrimental effect on us. And that signifies how we are living externally and ignoring our intuition. Because intuitively speaking, we should not be getting diabetes. We shouldn't be dying of cardiovascular disease prematurely, which is the real pandemic. And it is contagious. And I don't mean by coughing and things going in, particles going in the air, and then you getting cardiovascular disease. It's, it's here. It's the fear. Chronic anxiety and depression. Sugar, war, drugs, sex, you name it. This is the spiritual action potential. This is what relates to our motivation. This relates to our procrastination. And when we start to identify, if we're being hyperstimulated throughout the day by a lot of different things, your ex-wife, your wife, your girlfriend, your boy, whatever the case. I wonder how much that has to do with us ignoring our intuition, which keeps us on our path towards who we truly are. It's the cosmic self, the universal self. You remove all of the external factors and you find peace within yourself. 
you identify all of the things that have that in your life that have led you down these paths you get stimulated your your dopamine and serotonin reduce but in the meantime that's that that stimulation has emotionally triggered you into altering the decisions that you make throughout the day one decision however many decisions you make daily they're meant to deviate you from that path we stay close to that path close to that purpose by understanding this dynamic thank you everybody for joining me on today's episode god bless everybody stay hydrated get your rdas for vegetables and fruits and make sure you're getting sleep all right jeremy from my motivate me signing off